Margo? Margo, hey. Look, I need to borrow your car. What? Your car. I don't have a car. I mean your mom's car. Mm, I... Also, I need to drive the car because I have nine things I need to do tonight and more than half of them require a getaway driver. What are you, is he committing felonies? Ooh, remind me, is breaking and entering a felony? Yes, what? Well. Margo! Okay, uh, I gotta go, so are you in or out? Why can't you just get one of your underlings to help you out, like Jace or Lacey or Becca? They're part of the problem, actually. What problem? There are nine problems. And your boyfriend is one of them? Ex-boyfriend. Hmm. Ooh, that was a look at the new film, Paper Towns, which hits theaters this Friday. And joining us now, the film's executive producer and the author of the novel that the film is based on, John Green. And John, you, you know for sure, you have found out the hard way that the star in the movie, yeah. her name is Cara Delevingne. Cara, not Cara. Do not call her Cara. Don't call her Cara. What no. happens? It's Cara Delevingne. Well, she just, she's very polite, but she, correct, <laughs> she corrects you every time. So if you call her Cara oh. 400 times, she's going to say Cara 400 times. Okay. So that's, I, I actually understand being called Mike, Micah. All my, I literally say, hi, I'm yeah. Mika. And yeah. they say, no, hi, it's Micah. Nice to meet you, Micah. <laughs> yeah. No. Thank no. you. No. All right. So I just want to give people some perspective. Um, your first novel that was adapted to film, not this one, uh, the 2012 bestseller, The Fault in Our Stars, opened at number one at the box office and made $307 million. Yeah. How old are you? Wow. Uh, 37. <laughs> wow. Okay. Wow. And, um, this was a few years ago. Your life just kind of exploded with these novels and movies. He's a rock star. He's a rock, <laughs> Micah, he a is literary. a rock star. He's a, he's a YouTube star. He's a YouTube star. He's a YouTube star. Everywhere. He's a YouTube star. Well, yeah. we're just he's a under a rock. <laughs> um, so I guess first of all, can you talk about that? That must have been we, it's sort of a weird experience. Yeah, I mean, for me, it was more of a slow uh, growth of audience over many years, so it didn't feel yeah. that traumatic. But the nice thing is that I live in Indianapolis. I am, a, you know, like a suburban married dad. So my life didn't change very much because, you know, inside the world of my family, nobody cares. Like my two year old doesn't care how well the movie definitely do. doesn't care. Yeah. No uh, girl or boy. Uh, so, she is a girl. Oh, she doesn't care. The five-year-old's a boy. Okay. He also doesn't care. Okay. Joe, jump in. Yeah, so, so John, what was the tipping point? It was a slow build. What, what caused the explosion? Um, I think when my novel, The Fault in Our Stars, came out, uh, I signed the whole first printing. So I signed the 100, 157,000 copies of the book, and I think that was sort of the initial thing that led to the book doing much, much better than any of my previous ones. Biana. I was just visiting my stepdaughter at sleepaway camp over the weekend, and you would be thrilled to know that every single girl in her book bunk had about five of your books. Oh, that's really? awesome. Yes. What is it about you uh, that, that resonates with teens and millennials? I mean, what, what do you think it is? You connect with them in a way that a lot of other writers don't. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know anything about being a teenager, and I didn't know anything about being a teenager when I was a teenager, but I think uh, I just try to take them seriously. I just try to uh, listen to them and I think uh, millennials are really intellectually curious and smart and engaged and uh, that they're using the internet in fascinating ways and if I can be part of that uh, part of that conversation that's really exciting. You sort of discovered this idea for the paper town yeah. on a road trip in South Dakota. Yeah. In search How? Of yeah, so paper towns are these, uh, there's this weird cartographic phenomenon where uh, people intentionally put uh, fake places on their maps as a copyright trap. So if they see that same fake, on, fake place on someone else's map, they think, uh, well, I've definitely been robbed. Um, the most famous example of this is Aglo, New York, a mm. paper town uh, that, that later became real because people kept going to that intersection where there was a fake place and eventually someone built a real place called Aglo. Um, and that's in the, the movie. But uh, I discovered it in South Dakota on a road trip with my girlfriend in college. Uh, we were visiting all of the world's largest ball the world's largest ball of twine, the world's largest ball of stamps, which is wow. in Omaha, Nebraska, and I <laughs> highly recommend it. The world's largest ball of paint is in Indiana. The world's largest ball of popcorn, also worth the trip. Oh, and of the course, world's the largest world's ball of paint is a, isn't that just a spot? No, dude, it's huge. Okay. He started out just painting a baseball. And uh -huh. then he kept painting the baseball, oh. and now it's uh, bigger than this table. Wow. And where's now, the popcorn? 
Uh, I can't remember. <laughs> okay. I, I feel bad. I like to think of myself as an expert in the field of the world's largest balls, and now I'm disappointed. <laughs> okay, seriously, right you now. say you know nothing about being a teenager. You are a, te <laughs> you are a teenager. <laughs> I'm just saying, you kind of sound like one. All no, right. in a All good right. way. YouTube, uh, 11 online series. Yeah. Um, reading about them right now. I, I feel like. This guy is like everywhere. I mean, and one's a fundraiser. Tell us about your YouTube Vlog Brothers channel. Yeah, so my brother and I started making videos in 2007, just back and forth to each other, and we've kept doing that for the last eight years. But uh, now we also run an educational series called Crash Course, where we teach everything from uh, chemistry to literature and history, um, and that's used in lots and lots of schools. And we also have this big fundraiser every year called the Project for Awesome that this year raised uh, over a million dollars in 48 hours for Save the Children and Partners in Health and other organizations working in global poverty. All right, this is awesome. And Paper Towns is in theaters across the country. I love the fact that real paper books are selling. That's <laughs> Me cool too. too. Right? I bet you are. John Green, thank you so much. Very nice to meet you. Thank you. Up next, what if anything did we learn today? Hey YouTube fans, I'm Luke Russert. Thanks for checking out our MSNBC channel. Subscribe by clicking right here and click any of the videos over here to watch the latest breaking news, mini documentaries, conversations from Shift, and other digital exclusives. Check it out.